Well, here we're going to do what I would like to call a roadside review. I was driving down the road and saw this 1978 Cadillac Seville with a for sale sign in it. Of course, I had to stop, especially being that I had one of these vehicles. I previously owned a 1979 Cadillac Seville diesel that was in a similar color, although it was a little bit darker gray, almost a graphite color. This one is a lighter gray. 1978 was the third model year for this Seville, and it was an amazing success for Cadillac. This car was originally going to be called a LaSalle, and it was scheduled to be priced at the lower end of the Cadillac pricing spectrum because the car was smaller. But the car clinic so well, and when Cadillac Marketing asked buyers what they thought the price was of this vehicle, they ended up saying a price that was even higher than the other Cadillacs in the lineup. So the Seville was thus born as Cadillac's most expensive car. In 1978, the base price of the Seville was $14,161. That's about $60,000 to $65,000 in 2023 dollars. So a very, very expensive car. Back from the time where you really couldn't finance these vehicles over anything more than four years or so. There was no 84-month financing. And unfortunately, this car isn't in all that good a shape. You can see the bumper fillers in the rear are missing. It has some rust on it. The vinyl top is a little crispy, and the interior isn't all that great. But the car still is a tremendous looker. And 1978 was a great year for the Seville. It was actually the year in which this particular generation sold the most units with production hitting 56,985 units for the 1978 model year. This Seville was just an absolute runaway success for Cadillac. And you can see here it was also fuel injected. It had an Oldsmobile 350 cubic inch V8 under hood making 180 horsepower. Although it was an Oldsmobile V8, Cadillac put its own exclusive multi-port fuel injection system on it that was not offered in any Oldsmobile. One way you can tell this car is in 1978 is by the seat stitch pattern there and the steering wheel. That stitch pattern was used in 1978 and 79, but the steering wheel, that two-spoker, was unique to 1977 and 78. 79 got a new steering wheel and also a terrible burl walnut faux wood grain trim. 78 has a much better wood grain trim. And you can see this is a pretty overstuffed interior. The door panels are thick, the armrests are thick. Lots of soft touch materials. You can see there reading light in the C pillar. Let me try to get some more focus on it here. It's a little tough. But it's a pretty comfortable interior, although not that roomy on the inside. These seats are so puffy, and this car is relatively small on the inside. It is a 114 inch wheelbase. This is a stretched Chevy Nova, stretched by about three inches, a little over three inches actually, mostly though in front of the windshield. Here you can see that two-spoke wheel and Cadillac's automatic climate control and the headlamp control. Again, that two-spoke wheel was unique to 1977 and 78. 1976 had a three-spoke wheel. 1979 had a different two-spoker. And here's the outside temperature gauge and thermometer. This actually lights up at night and the numerals rotate to tell you what the temperature is. You can also tell this is a 1978 on the outside, or at least you know that it's not a 1976 because it doesn't have the egg crate grill. This grill came about for the 1977 model year. So between the exterior touches and the interior, you can identify these Seville's and impress your friends pretty easily. Now let's take one more walk around this Seville. It's certainly a very elegantly proportioned car. Lots of dashed axle. Look how far that front wheel is pushed forward. That's really where some of that wheelbase stretch went, was into that area between the windshield and the front wheel. Gave the car better proportion, kind of a sporty proportion. You can also see those huge cornering lights. Those illuminate and stay illuminated if you have the Twilight Sentinel option, which turns your headlights on. If it, you have the Twilight Sentinel set so that it has a delay to turn the headlamps off, and you put the turn signal on, the cornering lights will stay on with the headlights until they shut off. There you can see that dash to axle proportion on this car. That wheel is pushed very far forward relative to the windshield. It actually kind of looks very jag Jaguar E-type-ish, or I should say Jaguar. But this uh, 78 Seville is one that was also sold, you'll see here in the back, by Don Massey. There's a Don Massey dealer badge on it. 
For those who grew up in Michigan, you will recognize Don Massey's name because there were radio ads airing all the time that said, I'm Don Massey, Don Massey Cadillac at I-275 and Ann Arbor Road in the magnificent community of Plymouth, Michigan. That's how all of his ads started. And another interesting thing about this car is it doesn't have really the Cadillac vertical lamp signature. It has these boxy taillights. And the Seville never really got those vertical lamps. The next generation Bustleback had horizontal lamps. The 86 Seville had horizontal lamps. The 92 Seville had horizontal lamps. The 98 did. So just never got those vertical lamp signatures, although it did get these fiber optic lamp monitors you can see there. There's three different fiber optic lamps that help you monitor whether or not the turn signals are working, the headlights, or the bright lights. As I said, this Seville had a fuel-injected Olds 350 V8. In 1978, it was the first year you could get the Olds 350 diesel under hood. Wah, wah. I don't know that that was a prize, but as I said, I had a 79 Seville diesel one year later, which had fast start glow plugs. In other words, at zero degrees Fahrenheit, the maximum wait time for the glow plugs was six seconds. Whereas in 1978, I believe the wait time could be up to two minutes in that condition. Can you imagine sitting in your car with the key on, waiting for the glow plugs to warm up for two minutes on a very cold day? I do not think buyers like that. Mine actually did warm the engine up enough to start on a zero-degree day uh, after six seconds. I never had any starting issues with the car. In fact, my car was very reliable. It just was extremely slow. The diesels only had 120 horsepower compared to the 180 horsepower on the gasoline-powered vehicles. And it was fine if you drove it normally, but to pass, especially on a two-lane road, you had zero passing power. I think the car was about 18 seconds, zero to 60. So that gives you a sense of how slow it was. One more look at that two-spoke steering wheel, which has a few cracks in it. Uh, unfortunately, this car, like I said, is not in all that great a shape, so don't get too excited with the phone number on there to call it. I don't think I'd recommend it unless you could get it for a really good price. The car also does have the power antenna on the driver's side. In 1979, I believe the power antenna was on the passenger side. Not sure why they moved it around, but they did. And here's a final look at this 1978 Seville. Hope you enjoyed this roadside review. Thanks again for watching this roadside review of the 1978 Seville. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you. Thanks again for watching.